Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus Strix GTX 980. Now one of the things I will say is I have reviewed the 970 version as well and all of the scores are in the graphs if you're interested. We just, where these literally came at the same time rather, where they, uh, where, where they did come at the same time, we're just going to make a video about the 980, but like I said, all the results are there for the 970 in there as well, if you do want to have a look. But, so, the GTX 980 Strix, um, I think we should just probably just move on with this. It does look very similar to all of the other cards that they've done, but I think you're going to be surprised with the performance. But, let's just get on with it. So, a quick look at the card itself. And essentially, it looks like all of the other Strix cards. It really does. We do have the two SLI bits all poking out. People will ask me, it is a custom PCB. Uh, yes, it's Strix, but it's still direct contact cooling, which is where the direct CU2 comes in. I Even I personally think this is a, a bit um, confusing. I think they should just have the Strix on it. But anyway, Strix logo there. We do have the two power points here, power connectors rather. And they do light up white when they're in the rig as well to show that they're all connected properly. But, but an 8 and a 6 pin, you can see the massive 10 mil heat pipe there, but there are more on this side as well. It does look the part, but like I said, it looks very similar to all the other uh, Strix cards. I've obviously had the 780 here before and it looks pretty much identical to that. I know it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not the same underneath, but you know, I'm still not 100% sure on the eyes or on these though, because that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be the owl eyes, and you can see like the side of the head bits here. I like the design, I'm just not too... But anyway, you don't really see it anyway, do you? But round the uh, back, you can see that we've got three display ports, and that's so that if you do want to run surround with G-Sync, because you need to run your G-Sync on display ports, you've got enough of that. You've still got HDMI, and then you've also still got the, the normal DVI up here too, there's a nice meaty brace as well when you look, and it runs a good way down the card. And I have to admit, when it was in the rig, it didn't, the, the card wasn't sagging at all. So it's done a pretty good job. But that's enough of us looking at it. Let's get it in the rig. Strange angle, admittedly, for the system shot, but the point that I wanted to raise was we're on the desktop, as I will spin round and show you, and the fans are off, it's passive. Um, so it's making absolutely no noise whatsoever. But system rig, as it always is, this is the graphics card test rig. We've got a Rampage 4 Black Edition, a 4960X at 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, we've got a 16 gigabyte 2133 memory, AX1500i. Yes, it's massive overkill, but as I keep saying, because people keep do bringing it up, uh, it's the one that we use for all of the reviews so that we don't have to keep changing and swapping stuff around. Uh, if you did want a, a, a power supply for this, bearing in mind the, what I'll talk to you about power and stuff in a minute, you wouldn't need more than a uh, 650 watt to run this sort of spec. And you'll see, like I said, you'll see why in a minute. But we've obviously got the, the Asus Strix and then we've got a H105 for cooling, all in a Corsair 760T. And uh, before we uh, do go any further, because I know you people are going to ask. So yeah, look it up. There will be a review very soon. I have three. Okay then, peeps. So moving on to temperatures and clocks and power usage as well, because we've got it all on one screen this time. If you can't see things clearly, blow it up into full screen, maybe let it buffer in 1080 or something, but I'll talk you all through it anyway. So first of all, power. We've been using um, the Corsair Link software ever since that we've been running the AX1500i. And the power in max, you can see up here, is 359.8. Power out max is 336.4. We um, always state it as from the wall because it's the entire system that we're running. So the 980 has only pulled 360 watts with the 2011 and everything else. 
Um, the stock one was pulling about 356, but you know our our base system with this, with a very very basic graphics card, uh, roughly pulls about 220 watts. So you can kind of get the gist of you know this really doesn't pull a lot. Obviously we've got the stock clocks here. Uh, 1178 boost 1279 the reason why I use GPU Z if you see up here it's actually boosted that little bit further as well and it's running 1300 megahertz out the box without any overclocking without anything like that it has boosted itself up to 1300 or 1 1.3 gigahertz whatever if you want to put it which is pretty mental you can also see over here though now it does, um, they do reduce the clocks as well when it goes into like a, the passive mode and everything because the fans currently, while we're on the desktop, aren't even spinning. Um, and it goes down, this is 135 megahertz uh, at the minute. Um, so maximum temperatures, auto fans, just let it do what it wanted, 70 degrees. And that is with an ambient room temperature of 22 degrees. So you're looking at about 48 degrees delta, awesome. Idle temperature. Um, we left it running for about 15-20 uh, minutes just in the room and it was at 35 degrees. Obviously the idle temperature is going to depend, this was before a um, over, before, before the temperature run. Obviously once it's warmed itself up after a run and then goes back into that passive mode it can take a little while to get back down to that point but that's completely down to the way you have your rig and everything spec'd up. But the fact that it can be pushing out sort of 35, 40 degrees and still be running completely passive on a desktop like this. And don't forget, this is a 2560 by 1440 screen as well. So it is, um, you know, it's not having an, an easy life, so to speak. And it does look rather, rather lovely. But anyway, so, right, so... Fire Strike Extreme on the screen, which is the one I've literally just run straight in front of us, is 5836. Uh, and that's the score that, like I said, we've just got. You can get a slight bit of difference between the runs. I could run this again and we'll get the, the score that we got in the review. Um, so if I bring the graph up, we've uh, we got 5901. Now, to try and keep things in mind for you guys, you can see that the, we've got quite a few in the graph there. Yeah, we actually pick and choose what we put in the graphs now because otherwise we'd need a bloody, um, I don't know, we just wouldn't have enough room on the screen to put them all on there. I think we've done fucking loads now. But anyway, so 5,901. To be honest with you, peeps, a score with a 5 at the beginning is pretty epic. But the fact that we're running 5 8 at stock is fucking mental. And I do mean utterly mental. There was times when I was overclocking the bejesus out of stuff just to try and, um, uh, you know, get up to kind of like sort of five nine sort of um, score. So the fact that it's chucked that out at stock is monumental. And you can see that by the way that it is so high in the graph. Um, we did get 5,950 with uh, the 780 tie with a huge overclock on it. But then if you look just above the 780 tie, you can see 6,000. 397 and that was the overclock that we got with fire strike extreme we were pushing um over uh 1400 megahertz with the boost with the overclocking it was 1318 um uh, as our actual base gpu clock then it boosted us another 100 megahertz of pushes over that 1400 megahertz barrier and what i will add as well is that was without any voltage added that was at stock volts we just moved the slider um, and it pumped out uh, that's you know it pumped out that and that was a hundred percent stable as well because we run our full batch of benchmarks on it so these things do have the ability to uh, overclock quite significantly as well 3d mark 11 and our x score was 6100 and four again that was a live run that we've done for you for the actual review we got 6103 so pretty much identical as i said you can get some variances and in the graph you can see we also got a 16880 for the p score but this kind of uh graph is pretty good because if you have a look above there's only pretty much dual cards above it uh, <laughs> And the overclock score is, uh, well, 6,678, which in itself is, is a bit mental. And as you can see, that uh, two 7970s, yes, yeah? so I know they're only old, they're older cards, but two of them 
um, uh, we're scoring roughly you know the same sort of that the single 980 does so you can just see that in a few years I'm still running 7970s of my personal rig um, so those are now putting out the same kind of scores that a single 980 is with a bit of an overclock yet using obscene amounts more power um, it just goes to show you how far technology has come in the last few years you know depending on the way that you want to look at it I just wanted to uh, yes you can see my reflection moving around in the top of the screen but I can't even um, describe how nice this screen actually looks and yes it is part of the uh, um, I'm using it as part of the testing for the, the screens and you're just getting to see that but anyway so minimum frames a second 49.1 max 80 average 62 and if I was to make the graph pop up uh, we've um, varied everything in the graphs with this one we've not got any of the SLI stuff in the top but as you can see the um, some of the 780 ties in this game at least were um, uh, performing better than the 980 and that includes with the overclock if you have a look this is more than likely going to be down to um, them tuning the drivers slightly better because obviously we are still on the uh, the launch drive of things and these things do uh, get updated and stuff but you know to keep things fair as you can see yes the 780 tie is uh, quicker in this game at least than the, the 980 but if you have a look we've got the 290x lightning um, uh, further down as well so there's a lot of them in there and the 290x lightning just to kind of put it out there as far as this was concerned was the fastest AMD card that we've tested uh, with Tomb Raider okay so minimum 29.1 maximum 58 average was 35 obviously that's 25 60 by 14 40 completely maxed out if we bring that up into the graph this graph is completely different because the only thing that uh, beat this was um, the uh, the SLI um, results um, and, to <laughs> and to be fair it, it's just uh, well you can see there just look below the the bottom red one is the stock the uh, top red one was the, um, get your words out Tom, was the overclock. And you can see that there's an awful lot of uh, results in that graph, but there isn't a great deal when you think about it um, uh, between them. The 37 um, average on 2560 by 1440 is uh, down near the bottom there. And then when you kind of go up to the top, the overclock, even though it was monstrous, only give you an actual three frames per second as an average at the top end. But you can see that there was a there's a lot of cards in between that gap there. Okay then, so moving on to the conclusion, we'll start with the award as we always do, and then we will uh, talk our way through it. And what else can I give it? You can't give this thing anything other than the gold award. Um, even though that it's a custom PCB and you've got the uh, extra fan, consider it compared to the, the stock one, the power usage hasn't really gone up. It's still only looking at 360 watts for the entire test system uh, when it's being used in Unigen. And I, that's what I use with, I always use Unigen with all the other cards. So you get the gist of, you know, just quite how little these things are pulling. It, was, it would have been o well over 500 watts if it had uh, been an AMD card. So just to kind of like put those kind of numbers out there and yet they still, as I've shown you, push out some unbelievable uh, scores. Uh, in one of the graphs you could see that it was uh, around about the sort of performance that you get from two 7970s. Now they're not particularly old cards. You may think the name 7970 is old but you can also chuck the uh, 280X in there because it was exactly the same thing just to kind of give you a, an idea, it's twice as quick as uh, as they were. So you know, some of the you know they are they're just fuck. It is a, they're wicked. And at the end of the day, let's uh, put things into context. When it's uh, doing light duty, so watching films, even some uh, light uh, games, because some of the games that we run with the tests, the fans don't spin up for about a minute or so anyway. And even then, they're completely inaudible. 
Um, but the fact that it, they completely switch themselves off and run passive at the desktop, I mean, it, it just goes to show you how efficient these things are. And let's face it, I mean, me personally, when I um, run uh, cards, I generally don't even uh, let the, the fans do anything until it's doing it when it's sat at about 60, 65 degrees, if they're on air anyway. That's how I personally tune the rig. Once it gets up to that point, you can kind of keep the, the temperatures to a, certain, you know, to a safe level. Um, but, but the fact that these do it out of the box is unreal. Now, um, so pretty much with a lot of the graphs, the only thing that could really contend with it was the dual card stuff. I mean, that in itself is uh, epic. We're still on the launch driver as well, and I would be gobsmacked if in a few months time, things haven't taken even bigger steps uh, forward. Price wise, it's actually not that bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Yes, I did just have to Google it because I got my numbers mixed up and I couldn't remember which way around it was. But for just to kind of pick a name out of the hat, overclockers in the UK have got it um, uh, up for 499. Now, let's kind of put things into context here. Uh, it was only a couple of three months ago that I was reviewing um, uh, 780 Ti's that were 599. And they, they're obviously they're not as you know as quick as this, but yeah. So the fact that we're getting the kind of the aftermarket cards coming through with the overclocks and the custom PCBs, and the price is still under 500 quid. It is like a hundred pound less at least than what we'd have expected a similar sort of 780 tie model to have been. So it's pretty damn, um, I know they're still expensive, I'm not trying to say that they're not, but they're actually uh, a lot better value for money than the 780 ties were. So they do really, really well on that point as well. So not only is it gonna cost you less to buy, it's gonna cost you less to run, and it's also gonna be um, you know, able to put out some epic scores even when you up the resolution. Um, so all in all, the Asus Strix, like I said, Gold Award, it's probably, well, it is the fastest single card, uh, single cord card, because I know you can get 295s and all that kind of stuff, but anyway, fastest single cord card ever. But the fact that they are still using so little power is uh, just testament to how uh, good the Maxwell architecture is. And let's not face it, uh, this not forget, rather, with a little bit of tinkering with the overclock, you can have this thing with the boost sitting at 1400 megahertz and not even have to touch the vaults. So there's a lot to be said for all of these things here. So to weigh it all up, it's absolutely fucking mental, bonkers mental quick, both out the box, and even more so if you want to uh, have a little tinker as well. Um, and one thing I will say is that if you want to, uh, with the boost, uh, we did it with all the fans at stock, but if you uh, fiddle with the fans a little bit more, the boost will actually allow you to go that little bit further as well. It's just because we kept ours all, you know, a, a nice, decent um, temperature and stuff. But if you want to, uh, yeah, if you want to push those fans up a little bit, maybe, or maybe you'll have a slightly cooler room or something like that, you will actually get even more out of it. But let's face it, even if you're running in a room like I am and don't mess around, you're still going to have a card that's going to happily sit itself at 1300 megahertz but anyway i'm going to love you and leave you with my bonkers t-shirt and this is tiny tom logan with another video for you out Ding! i did it wrong Ding! that's better